What's up you guys? Welcome to the Modern Homemaker channel. I'm Alex and on today's video I'll be sharing with you how I created this drafting table using mostly wood from a used palette and a little bit of patience. This project is pretty much complete now but I will be adding an acrylic top to ensure a flat surface to draw on. This table has an adjustable top and can be completely folded away to be kept flat if, like me, you have zero space to waste. I'm transforming this space into a studio slash guest bedroom, so don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to check out all of my upcoming projects. And I think that's enough chit chat, so I'm gonna let the voice over me take over from now. The first thing for me, as always, is to separate all the slabs from the palette and removing the nails. I've done this so many times before and honestly it's like a real pain in the ass so I tricked my husband into doing it for me. Later that month I finally got to it and the first thing I did is to choose the boards that I wanted to use for the tabletop, checking that they had a similar color, thickness and just, you know, general appearance. And with that laid out I proceeded to mark a pattern on the boards that will later cut to make it look like a butcher block. But using the fact that they are the same boards to our advantage, assuring a perfect fit. So make sure to mark them with numbers so that you can puzzle them the exact same way later on. And then I made the cuts and got ready to glue them together. And honestly, I think I've worked harder on this project than I have ever before, because I even took the time to sand the edges of each board, which I'll recommend if you're working with palette wood, since they tend to have very unfinished edges and things could go wrong later, so... And since I have tried this method before and it hasn't exactly worked perfectly, this time I tried hugging it not just from one corner to corner, but also from top to bottom to ensure the boards would stay flat next to each other and it worked great. 10 out of 10 would recommend if you're trying this technique. Let me show you what I mean with that. First off, I started with this thing flat on the floor and added these uh, larger clamps in the center and then very carefully I started placing um, these pieces of this this piece of wood, these boards uh, underneath the ends and on top, so that I could screw in these smaller clamps. It was kind of tricky and it did fall apart a couple of times before I got it right. And then in the center, I added um, a thicker piece of wood and sort of to ensure that it remained a flat surface. Many unbearable hours later. Here you can see it's the next morning and everything was nice and dry at this point and it was time to do some sanding to the tabletop, first with an 80 grit and then a 120 grit, which took me about an hour but it was definitely worth it considering it looks smoother than a baby's bottom. Definitely a lot of work, but you know, this is how recycling palette goes. <sighs> Off with the easy part, it's time to start working on the legs and other mobile parts, and here is where it will get a little bit tricky, so I'll try to add a drawn guide of all of the pieces in that description to make it visually easier for you. But I'm gonna take it step by step in here, starting with deciding the width and the length of the legs. And I wanted thick, sturdy legs, so I made each leg with two two centimeter thick boards of about one meter long, which ended up being a bit tall, but more on that later. And six centimeters width that I made from bigger boards, cut it to length. You'll need eight pieces in total, and at this point I am also going to round both, let's call them top and bottom, using a lid as a reference. This is going to ensure that the table is stable. 
stable, got it? Stable. Now I'm done rounding the edges and I just wanted you to see that um, they are perfectly aligned on this side and on this side not so much but that's not going to be an issue because I am going to choose the side that matches the best to be the one that's going to be on the bottom of the legs so that it won't wobble and it can stand up just better you're going to end up having eight equal pieces that are going to be paired and glued later on to form the four legs. But first, we'll be drilling the holes that will connect these four legs into the X shape that gives this table its ability to be folded away. And in here, I'll include a diagram of the exact placement for these holes, since I ended up drilling too many and having to fill them later on. After that, I just needed to glue them to their partner and wait for them to dry into four pieces. I helped myself with some leftover wooden poles to ensure that the holes will fit. And it didn't matter if it moved the legs off a little bit because I let her trim the excess with my jigsaw. While that is drying, we are going to cut from that same 6 cm wood strip two 50 centimeter pieces and two 16 centimeter pieces and round the edges as we did with the legs. For the shorter pieces we are going to drill a hole at one end and on the other side just go halfway. And then distribute other six different holes in the middle that we are going to later open halfway out at a little angle to create the different heights for our tabletop to sit. Do this with both pieces and set them aside for sanding. Now for the longer pieces, we are going to drill holes at both ends and open one of them straight down with the help of a jigsaw like so. This particular piece is going to set the height of the table. And the last thing to cut before we get to sanding and assembling are these six little bits that are going to serve as the articulations for the tabletop. I made them 7 cm tall and placed the hole closer to the rounded edge, giving myself a full centimeter margin to ensure the pieces would rotate properly. Again, I don't know why I didn't record it, but you'll need to cut two of the smaller bits top so that it looks like this. So you have two pieces with holes all the way, two pieces with half a circle each, and two pieces with holes drilled just half of the way. Here I'm checking that everything fits how it's supposed to and also figuring out the placement of each piece. I ended up going with the 16 cm pieces on the outside, followed by the fully drilled bits on the closed side of it, and with the half circles holding the bar on the open side. In the center is the mechanism to set the tabletop angles that consists on the halfway drill bits that smaller dented pieces and two poles holding it all together at the top and bottom. I gave everything a thorough sanding, which again took me about an hour. And then I began gluing the parts, starting with the dented mechanism in the center that I later removed from the center and decided to glue last because I wasn't very sure on if the teeth should be facing up or down. 
Then I attached the other four beads on the top and bottom of the table, keeping the poles and other pieces in place to make sure everything was at the right distance and everything fits properly. It is important that you leave this to dry for at least 4 hours before attempting to glue the legs on and I let mine dry overnight just to be safe. Attaching the legs is both very simple and very complicated. I managed to do it by myself, but get an extra pair of hands if you can. Start with the outer legs on this side with the closed bits. And then proceed to get the center poles through both inner and outer legs. If you did the holes how I instructed before, you should be adding two poles here instead of just one. I'll be adding mine later on, because at this time, I didn't know I needed it. Secure everything strongly with a clamp and then add the leftover pole on the bottom of the outer leg. And leave it to dry overnight. Here I'm drilling the holes that I just told you about, where I'll be placing another pole to help the inner legs from moving around like crazy. The only issue with this was that, with everything else in place, it was impossible to get the pole in, so I had to improvise and make a random cut to be able to fit both pieces on the outside edges first, and then glue them back together, which surprisingly worked like a charm. And once that is dried, you can remove the clamps and flip it to check that everything works, that is stable and also to check the right position of the dented mechanism, which have the teeth facing the tabletop. I glued the last part and then was ready for the final touches, like applying a wood oil. I also added a strap of fabric with a little nail that would allow me to tie the center part away when I'm not using it. And the table was officially done! And that concludes today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and that at least one of you is brave enough to give this DIY a try because it really came out just how I envisioned it and I'm super super happy with the result. Don't be discouraged if you have never ever worked with wood before 
Before this YouTube channel, I had zero experience with woodworking and having a lot of things to learn still, I think I can testify that it's not as hard or as scary as it may look like. So hopefully give this a try, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and I'll see you guys next time.